Ah. Hi everyone, Bald, Bald on Bald, Bald Violence here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Smashing Pumpkins album, Autumn. Yep, new full-length LP here from the legendary Smashing Pumpkins, one of the most essential alternative rock bands from Gish to Siamese Dream to Melancholy to Adore. The initial run these guys had in the 90s made for some of the most genre-defining rock of that era. Not just because the best music on these records was incredibly catchy and well-written, but aesthetically, despite detractors and maybe not even a full conception of what they were doing, they were so on the pulse in terms of what was artistically necessary during this time period. Whether they were dabbling in grunge or dream pop or shoegaze, their work was consistently timely and cutting edge. Not to mention frontman Billy Corrigan was penning some of the best hits of this time period too. I would put 1979 and today or tonight over any industry lab chart topper produced during that era. So considering all of this, it's just baffling that the band would lose the plot as hard as they did once the 2000s rolled around. And of course, also around this time, you had numerous members uh, break off, pretty much leaving uh, the band, as it were, in Billy's hands, creatively speaking. It's been so disappointing to hear Billy churn out one non-essential and overly indulgent dud after the next. Now, eventually in the Smashing Pumpkins trajectory, we did see key members, Jimmy Chamberlain and James Eha, re-enter the fold, but even there, their presence couldn't alter this trajectory of diminishing returns as Billy continued to bury the band in these increasingly convoluted and thankless records like Seer and Shiny and Oh So Bright. And now we have Autumn which is allegedly the third part of a trilogy that I'm, I'm sure the vast majority of us were unknowingly moving through, which started with Melancholy, moved to those Machina records. Yeah, now we have this three disc, two hour monster that's been getting released in chunks, but honestly, I pretty much waited to hear most of it as it was just kind of, you know, all, all out. I guess I'd rather the thanklessness of listening to this project uh, just hit me all at once. And that it did. It definitely did that when I listened to it. If you're a longtime fan of this channel, you know I'm no stranger to lengthy projects, but somehow Autumn still feels like one of the longest slogs I've had to wade through for this channel. And I think the reason for that comes down to two things, the musical side and the conceptual side. As far as the music on this project is concerned, the aesthetics, the melodies, the instrumentation are about as uninspired and as uh, forgettable as it gets. And that's despite this record being tagged as uh, rock opera-esque in tone. It's uh, trying to be epic. But with this record, I don't think we've ever had a stronger confirmation that Billy Corgan has truly lost the plot as far as where music is currently at. Which I think is an important thing to be aware of, even if you're not the type of artist to hop on trends. Because diving into the unknown can require you to know what is unknown. Where is the unknown even at? And while, yeah, Billy is most definitely not concerned with appealing to the masses on this one, I have to wonder if he's even concerned with appealing to anyone at all. Because there was truly nothing on this album that stood out to me as aesthetically stunning or done particularly well. Really much of what you get are these hideous and bloated clashes of synth pop and hard rock, sometimes metal. Occasionally this stuff is produced in a way to make it sound somewhat futuristic, but it's a perception of futurism couched in a lot of progressive electronic aesthetics uh, from the late 70s and early 80s. So in a way, Billy has somehow engineered this record to sound dated in more ways than one. Dated and derivative at points as well. Like with the track Beguiled, for example, which uh, kicks off with these heavy, chunky metal riffs, sounds like something off of a 90s Metallica record, but I don't think Billy is enough of a showman vocally to really bring home the campy thrill uh, the track is obviously going for. And there's further examples of this record failing to drum up anything interesting from a musical perspective. There's Butterfly Suite. Now, I know this one may just be Billy kind of going for a, a bit of a, a new wave thing here, but really it just ends up sounding like a crummy Future Islands rehash. On The Good and Goodbye, uh, we have Billy and company working with riffs that uh, feel like they were lifted off of a Tool album from years 
years ago. Meanwhile, Beyond the Veil is like an epic 80s synth odyssey, but with a very modern butt rock riffs. Some weird pew pew sounds going on in the background as well that aren't really complementary to uh, the band performing or just the overall instrumental palette. And then the closing track of Wings, who's synced up synths and chants and religious undertones and calls of la 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 have me feeling like I'm listening to, I don't know, uh, children's music for uh, the indoctrination into some kind of religious space cult. In addition to that, many of the instrumentals on this thing sound so lifeless and stiff. They lack in nuance and body. It's like every single song here is a variation on what you would get from a boomer alone in his home studio, which he put together using the most expensive recommendations uh, that he read off of some gearhead forum. And then using that perfect studio to just put together the loudest and blandest thing he could conceive. Look, that's likely the most concise breakdown I can give you on the musical side of this record. I'm gonna leave it there because I don't think there's much function in dissecting every single instrumental on this project. The vast majority of them are mediocre reinterpretations of something much better. Not to mention Billy repeatedly fails to put his own spin on any of them. Or even stick to a mood, a sound, or a vibe that would have given this record some lick of cohesion. Because you have these electronic tracks, you have these metal tracks, arena rock tracks, operatic tracks, all alternating with no real attention being paid to whether or not they're flowing into each other all that well. So in a nutshell, that's kind of the music side. Then we have the concept side, which in a lot of ways is just as disheveled. And also upping the ante from previous projects in terms of being convoluted and difficult to follow. But if you're familiar with the kinds of politics and viewpoints that have been occupying Billy's mind for the past few decades, be it on previous records or in interviews, there's nothing too surprising on Autumn. There are tracks that continue Billy's obsession with hierarchies and power, conspiracy, and control. And the commentary on these tracks can be awkwardly on the nose, like in the case of Empires, which gives some tracks off the new Muse record, for example, a run for their money in terms of sounding corny and feeling like a psyop meant to make people think that challenging political hierarchies is whack. There's also no shortage of allusions to space on this LP too, with the odes to aliens and space travel like on the song To the Greys. And while I think in general this is a worthwhile topic artistically, sitting in on Billy's perceptions of it makes me feel like I'm attending a weekly sci-fi meeting uh, held at a local rec club where the only point in going is really the free coffee and donuts and awkward PowerPoint presentations. There's lots of spiritual pockets on this project too, but many of Billy's words on this front feel like blind faith and praise as opposed to genuine and interesting dissection. Then there's the question of what is all of this pointing to? thematically and conceptually. Uh, while I'm sure there is an answer to that in Billy Corrigan's mind, I don't think he really puts in the effort to assemble it in such a way to where the audience can interpret it and make any coherent sense of it. Which is odd because when you look at the lyrics of any individual song on this record, uh, they're often pretty basic and not that hard to pull apart. Some portions of this record lyrically I would actually say are kind of redundant. Not only in terms of Billy not really getting too far into the details of what he's getting at, but also on Where Rain Must Fall, for example. Uh, we have Billy Corrigan singing about this uh, intergalactic pilgrimage of sorts, constantly repeating lyrics about a starway to the stars. A starway, mind you, not a stairway. And if this thing is a starway to the stars, why do we need to know it's to the stars? It's a starway. I'm going to assume it's it's that's where it's going, to the stars. Again, I don't think you need to be a rocket scientist or an English major to deduce what Billy is getting at much of the time on this LP, but whether or not he executes this record in such a way to where these 33 tracks are all reinforcing each other, are all building on top of each other, that's another story. Because I do not think this project is one that comes together fluidly, where you have peaks and valleys, highs and lows across the track list. This record runs more like a compilation than anything. You could have hit fans with any number of arrangements of these tracks and had pretty much the same result. And I think flow is especially important when you're talking about a record that is longer than many movies. Even assembling these discs in such a way 
to where you have certain themes or musical vibes relegated to either disc one or two or three. Would have been like a bare minimum choice in terms of organizing it, but Billy doesn't even do that. <sighs> yeah, this record, while a bunch of it uh, in a vacuum, a bunch of these songs in a vacuum, I think are listenable, are okay, as an overall experience, as an album, as a three-disc, two-hour experience, uh, I just found this completely thankless and um, you know, really soul-sucking to listen to. And really, truly lacking in anything new, exciting, boundary-pushing, anything. Like, come on, it's 2023. A rock opera in and of itself is not a daring statement at this point, especially when much of the meta-messaging on this project is so muddy. But yeah, I think I'm feeling a uh, light to decent three on this one. Ugh. Transition. Have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano. Smashing Pumpkins. Forever.